Hello everybody, this is our video solution to problem one from quiz 13, spring 2023, Math 302 here at Cal State Fullerton. Uh, this question is going to be all about just some very, very basic material about quotient rings. So we're going to start with a commutative ring with identity. Uh, many of the things we're talking about, you don't need a commutative ring or even an identity for that matter. Uh, but uh, it's just going to simplify some of the things and consistent with what we did in class. So we have a commutative ring R with identity and an ideal I of R. First question is, is what are the elements of the quotient ring R modulo I? So uh, this is one of those, if you know it, this is going to be very, very simple. If not, well, you don't have much hope. So R modulo I is going to consist of all of the translations of I by some element in R. Okay, so you translate i by r, that means I'm going to take r and add every element of i to it. it. Gives me some subset, probably not an ideal, probably not even a subring. It is just some set we call either a coset or a translation. All right, second problem. What are the addition and multiplication on r mod i? Okay, well, let's see. If I take two elements of r, okay, we'll call them little r and little s. These are going to be my translations. Okay, so I'm going to look at i plus r, and then I'm going to say I want to add i plus s. So I'm adding two of these translations together. And the way we defined it is we just take the translation of i by the sum of r and s. Well, what if we want to multiply? Well, it's very easy. Instead of translating by r plus s, we just translate by r times s. Now, of course, that these actually are binary operations on R mod I requires a proof that we did in class. All right, finally, if I is a non-zero prime ideal, then what can we conclude about R modulo I? All right, well, this is definitely not just the definition. We actually had to spend a good amount of time in class proving this as part of a larger, the following or equivalent result. Uh, recall that the non-zero is essential because actually by our definition of prime ideal, the zero ideal is prime. And what we're going to say here doesn't hold typically if i is 0. OK, so r modulo i, what can we say if i is prime? And the answer is that r modulo i, all right, and non-zero, of course, uh, r modulo i is an integral domain. Okay, so that's the the cool bit. Uh, of course, there's the analog of this for maximal ideals, in which case the uh, quotient ring would then be a field. All right, so there we go. Uh, yep, got to learn this basic stuff, know your basic results. Uh, we'll see you all next time.